Hello everyone, Corey here coming in to do the energy update for June the 4th. I had to look down at my phone, see what the date was <laughs> for June, for the week of June the 4th. This should have been recorded yesterday, but it didn't get done, um, but I'm getting it in today. So this is for the whole week, moving into this crazy, hectic week. So the only way I can describe this energy <laughs> that I'm picking up is there is a little bit of the energy feels a little bit like, you know, when... Uh, where kids or when a kid is the kid who's always not invited to the party <laughs> uh, being not invited to the party but you hear all the action there's a lot of things that you feel like is happening you but you start to create the narrative around what you think is going on is that the ego is doing a big dance into the shadow aspects of self what should be has is not there what should be happening the way things should be is not there it's like well this should be happening by now. I should have this by now. This should be there. Why am I not? I should be invited. The shoulda, coulda, woulda is, is so largely around us. And and so the the kid not invited to the party becomes the kid that says, F that, I'm going to be mad at everybody. And there's some sort of like, there is a, like the elastic band, there's tension and it's like stretching us and it's stretching. And it feels like it is like stretching and moving this energy to just say, I dare you, <laughs> right? But there's a sense of, um, there's a lot of illusions. And so there's a lot that is coming from the shadow aspect of self. And I know my personal self, I've been hearing the, you know, I hear the that shadow voice talking in the back. I hear the, I hear the, the enemy within, I hear the negativity within myself from behind, but it's not giving it a voice, but to say, I know you're there, right? I know you're there. What do you really need? What's really going on? And so that sense of that little kid not being invited to the party type of thing and sitting there and then being it's like, it don't just turn against the one who didn't invite them. It turns against everything. So it's so easy to turn a story, to flip a story, to get self caught up, to get entangled into a weave of deception in this energy. Now, everything says this should be such a good prime time. It's a good time. There's good things. And yes, it is. There is. This is oppor This is an opportunity. So there's opportunist and opportunistic moment or people and experiences that are coming in. And so if we want to really create the future for our truest of self, or do we keep creating from the aspect of the shadow in my book, Wine and Chips, I wrote, the life, the world is like going to one big masquerade party. And, and it's like, everyone is wearing a mask in this mask in the worlds of, of the masquerade party. So this masquerade party, and then the one who's stripped their mask down and not wearing their mask is the one who feels like they're not invited in, but why do you want to put a mask on? Why do you want to go to a party where you don't get to see truth? where you don't get to see the true people, where you don't get to see that true self. So really asking yourself, why do I want to be in that energy? Why do I want to be there? Why do I want to go to that place? And what am I trying to push myself into? And and why am I sitting here pouting? <laughs> and why am I sitting here pout, pouting? And, and why do I keep feeling the need that I need to be here? What is it I really truly seek? What is it I truly desire? This is all coming up now. In the also in the weather, I feel like that was really fast. Blah. So in the weather, like in the weather patterns, there's this sense of as if we're we're so we have this thing of where time is very time is like so time is like this what feels like is happening to our time is like it's warped and there's this warped and what now feels like even should be say june and we should be feeling june weather in the warmth is that we are slow so we're actually behind so sometimes even some of these readings if you go back a few readings before it may actually be resonating with you now so a reading i did a few weeks ago may be a reading that resonates with you now now the monthly message would have the whole month's energy but some of may's energy may be here because it's, it's like, it's like pulling itself. And so there is like this, this tension, it's like pull and twisting. So 
life is pulling us in all directions. It's twisting and bending and turning us. It's breaking us. It is breaking it down and it's taking off those masks. And so the only party we really want to go to is the one where that's not the masquerade where we can see every, we can see people's true self. Now we always wear a mask in the roles to a certain degree, but when you know the mask and you know that it is simply the mask and it's not all of your truth, you don't start to live in that. So prime example, when a young girl, a young, a young girl becomes a young woman and then the young woman decides she's going to be a mother or it just happens in life and, and mother, that mother role starts to come in is that we have been conditioned to believe that that mother is to lose that self of whoever she was is to now to be replaced with this mask and society hands you the mask and says, here's your mask of mother. And now you're going to step into the role of a mother and that's who you are. And so whatever you have been conditioned and programmed as a mother, so whatever you knew as a mother or whatever you're trying to prove different than the mother that you even had, you, that becomes all of the energy that, that plugs in. So that mask plugs into the body, plugs into the mind, and it becomes who you start to create. And so then you step into this mother. So then there's a mother. I'm a mother. She's a mother. And I've been talking about this mother stuff in different aspects and different ways over the last few days. And one of them was about how we break down even the mother. So there is the, there's the unwed mother, the single mother. There's the, you know, there's the, then there's the ultimate mother, the mother who's got the, the family, the mother who's got the husband, the mother who's got the, but then there's the, the, the subcategory of the single mother. A mother is simply a mother. Why do we need to judge it? Why do we need to break it down? Why does it have to be something more or something less? Argued that my whole life. <laughs> why, why is there such judgment on a mother who chooses to raise her child without, you know, without the, the other parent versus a mother who chooses to raise within the family, right? It's, 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 it's who we are in that mothering role and how we show up and how we react and how we respond how we behave in that role that matters. So I've seen a lot of money, mother dearest in experiences and, that, and that's not a judgment, but a mother dearest in some way of like over obsessive of the, of the mass they wear in the mother role and wearing that mother role so seriously that they have lost all sense of other self, that there is no other self. And so as the children grow and as children become, as children grow in their stages and they become older, is that the mother that originally became the mother and the way that she created that whole image of who she needed to be is that then she tries to force that into the evolution of the children. And the evolution of the children is the children are trying to become the, not the little babies, not your little babies, not your little kids, but trying to become the adult. And then there's the adult version of your children. So the adult version of your children is not still the same children. And here we have this, and but here there's this stagnant energy. Now that's not saying it's everything, but take that and turn that narrative into every aspect of our worldview and give it a worldview. And look at it in a, look at it in a, with a kaleidoscope of perspectives of every role, every mask that we wear and how the identity and how it can become an, you know, an obsessive or, you know, or it can become obsessive. It can become depleted. It can become anything, but behind it all, what was that person originally? What was that person originally to themselves? That they were a woman. They were a young woman. They were growing. They're evolving. What does a woman need? What does that woman need for herself? What are her needs? What are her, right? And, but she's also, she's also not the little child. So she's not the little child who once didn't get what she needed or didn't get the attention. Now she's a grown ass adult. So there is a sense of all of this energy that we have right now is stretching us and expanding us so that we can remove 
not just the mask, but plugging in to the stories, plugging into and tapping into the roles and the identity and the narratives and even the unhealthy part of egos narrative that it is trying to convince us and tell us of the way and what we should be and what the outcome should be. And what we're looking for is that sense of trying to find safety and comfort in a world that is very rocky and shaky and everything is being rocked and everything is being shaken up and everything is shifting. And so all of these shifts that are happening, and if we just tell ourselves like this energy that is just sitting there mad and building up anger and resentment and, and getting angrier because it is staying, sitting there looking at the door to the party that it's not invited into and just saying, well, I want to be invited in. And so there's all of this being built in, which then gives a, a ripple effect. So then there's a ripple effect of that energy and that's somehow playing out in the planets. So then there's this ripple effect of energy. So there we create our stories and our narratives. We, we start to get distracted. We start to get lost in it and we start to get all tangled up. And because energy out there is also energy in you, if you don't know all of that self and how you tick and how you respond and, and all of our own little isms and ludicrous behaviors and reactions that we have because we're in because the masquerade party exists we exist in a world filled with shadows that we are being presented what people want us to see of them and not really seeing a real truth of them is that it's a, is the ability to be able to use our discernment in those situations and in those times and in those moments and recognizing that so if we if we live in the character role of say mother and know, well, this is what a mother is. This is who a mother is. How do we ever get back to the sense of purification? How do we purify our heart of expect from the expectations? How do we stop judging ourselves and stop being so hard on ourselves? So the same thing goes to be in the business person. The same things goes to be, you know, whatever role we play, whatever character. It's about getting back to the originality of this person, this person, and what this person needs. And it's the same thing. What does, what does the earth as a whole need? Not what's, you know, it's like, so the earth is a part of the earth is a part of this galactical outer world, right? We exist inside of the earth. We are a part of the earth. We are in the earth. We live on the earth, but the earth, the earth is, is out there. So the earth is a planet. And the earth is a planet that is that is being influenced and affected by the planets outside of itself. The earth doesn't wear any other mask, but it's truth. It never told us it's not a planet. It never said it wasn't out there floating or out there sitting in the midst of nothing. It just is. And so we create a lot of narratives and stories as a world on a world scale of this earth and what this is. And it is a planet. Will Does it get the wear and tear of the universe? Of course it does. Does it get the wear and tear of what's happening in it? Yes. And so this is about us getting back to the, back to the, back to the, you know, the micro and getting back into this micro sense of self, but also being able to see the macro view of what is happening in the world, a world view which means opening our eyes. It's about taking off, peeling everything back and seeing this person and seeing this physical body and seeing this physical self and being here with this physical self, but also communicating and connecting with a greater sense of consciousness and not with the chatter, not with the, not with the hearing the noise of this masquerade party that is happening within the shadow aspects of the ego and just really truly getting there and allowing that self to emotionally spiritually evolve we are here to be a part of an expansion of ourselves and that expansion of ourselves brings us back to a sense of acceptance and it brings us back into a sense of oh before i was all of that i was this so before the earth was responsible, before the earth had to carry all of these human beings, it was simply another planet. 
before I was all of this, I was simply that. And before I started to put all this pressure on myself, I was this and I was that. And then by being able to get back to the original is that we recognize that what the world and what the people around us want the most and what they want to see and how the things that we have in our lives grow is by seeing the true face of what then is a part. And then they want to be a part of your world. They want to be a part of everything. But the world, there's on a world scale, is people are not really able to receive and hold. We don't need to force people into anything. We just got to be able to become, and same with ourselves, stop trying to force ourselves and trying to force the things because we are in this energy and it's moving like this. And it's not that we stop and it's not that we stop doing and it's not that we stop growing and it's not that we stop achieving our goals and working towards them. It's how we show up and how we get ourselves at these places of where we feel the, we feel this chattering. We hear these things that are going on and we tell ourselves, I got to get myself into there. I want to be a part of that, or I want to create that, but all a true sense of the true place where we're meant to be. People are waiting to see you. People are waiting to see the true you who's waiting to see your truth. You who's the one really waiting. And so this brings us back into a ground zero is that this is where we do have this ground zero energy that is happening. And it's before we take first steps. And so we are doing groundwork on this level and in this stage of where we are for taking the next steps. Now we don't just go from, we jump all over the place. We don't just, we don't take a clear path around. So it's not about, oh, I'm at, a, I'm in ground zero. Is that the new thought is saying yes to self or saying yes to whatever the universe has for this self that maybe we don't know, right? It's about becoming. It's about the aspect of getting to know thyself on, on a deeper level. And so I did go to the goddesses for this. And I put, and I have, as they're coming to mold the grass, I have feel, feed the light. I have Rose. Rose is the character in my book. And then I have, um, then I have beautiful transformation, Amira. So if we feed the light, life transforms, right? If we, if we stop sitting on the door, building up resentment doorstep and listening to the noise and making, creating stories and narratives in our heads, and we start and we get up and we move away from that energy. We move away from there and we move closer to the divine and towards the light. And to then we move more into the truth is that we find that we have a lot more friends than we have enemies. We have a lot more people and we have a lot more things that are inviting us in than we have that's rejecting us. We seek and search ways to be rejected. We seek and search ways because there is the sense of this resentment energy because we have this inner child energy right now that is inviting us to be able to come play in the garden, to play with us, to be there. But it's like, yeah, I can sit with you, but there's an adult world that's happening. So it's childlike energy that we need, but not broken, hurtful, trauma-based, childlike energy that rises us. It is childlike energy evolved into divine energy, which becomes where, how we evolve, which is, which is enthusiasm, which is a sense of excitement, but it is in an adult level. And this brings us into be able to coexist and then blend and work with adult energy and to be invited into the right places, but without mask, without illusions, without any, you know, preconceived idea or any pretenses you know what is the pretenses what am i what am i seeking out of this out of getting this what will this film what would what's this providing for the shadow but what is this providing for my light how is this feeding my light this is how we blossom this is how we grow because the blossom will not last forever but the fruit of the labor comes after the blossom 
And so, but it's, it's what people want to see. They want to see us. They want to see you. They want to see truth. And so if we want truth. We have to first become truth. If we want to live in a beautiful world is that we have to be able to step into a higher level of knowing in the evolution, the transformation of the psyche of the, of the emotional. So this is where emotional intelligence comes in. It's where self-actualization comes in. So self-actualization is actually realizing the self and who is that self and what is that self and where it is. So it's a time of, of becoming, but it's also a time of collapsing and forgetting. And it's like, Oh, I'm getting so forgetful. I got to go back. I got to hold on to this memory. I got to hold on to this. I got to hold on to that. No, that's the problem. We got to stop holding on and start letting go of the of the narrative of the chatter so that the things we're in creation with begins to be a part of such something more beautiful and it grows naturally it grows organically and then we have more organic energy because if we you know if we look at the environment is that what what contaminates us is often what we uh, what we put in to our own selves in what we get to push us. And so my years of being a workaholic was was based around if I keep doing this, if I keep doing that, you know, it's like give enough, do enough, the business will thrive, it will go, it will do. And it was like if I had to relax into it and if I had to create good healthy standards for myself, if I had to really recognize that it was a job and it was a business and it was a place to be and it was and it was a time to be there and it was a time to go home and that it was it was not about always what more I could give to make it better, but how I could create, how the fruits of the labor would come from building a strong foundation first and everything else would build itself up. But the face of the, authentic, the authenticity was not to be one that was worn down. It was one to be that was worn down that was angry that was resentful that was feeling left out that was all of those stories it was one that came in freshness it was one that appeared as bountiful it's one that appeared as if enthusiastic filled with bliss filled with joy and because that didn't exist then all of this was the illusion of chasing something and trying to create something out of the sense of of the preconditioned preconceived ideas of the role of the persona and of the sense of what I knew to be love. And, and it's like the thing that I absolutely loved the most was the thing that paid the greatest price. And, and those, there was two things. And that was myself that, which should have been involved and this, this self and the sense of my child, my, my, my daughter and how that would affect. And so always being concerned about her future left me to not to be involved so much in her present being over there being over there worried about what was coming and that's living from the mind and not living from the heart and that is the, you know the head creates every worry story everything but how everything is going to fail everything is going to collapse whereas the heart says everything will be fine everything will be okay what do you need how, you know, don't worry about things. It's like release the worry and move into faith. And there's a softness and there's a gentleness. So as we, as we, as we looked at the twisted and the twisted and overextended, the, the twisted stories in our, in our lives. And as we move through those twistings that we're untangling, we're untangling a lot of this blocked energy. We're moving past that. We're looking at and when you're looking at yourself and you see that self, if you see, I'm just going to use the mother role again. So if you see the mother that once was the mother to the children, you see a young person and you see the excitement, you see the naivety. If you look at the mother to the middle aged and you do them to the, to the, to the, at the middle point of raising children, and then you see them having to, you know, look at teenage issues and, and growing up and the possibility of them eventually moving forward. But if you're only trapped in the fear of losing your children to their future, how sad is that? Because is that really about you or is that about your kids? That's selfish. I'm so worried of losing my kids to their possible future that I'm not living in there now. 
or if you're so busy trying to create that future for the child. So this is within ourselves now, remember, is that this, this self is then trying to so busy create for the future that we forget to live with that child now. Now, that's every aspect of our inner child healing, of our shadow work, of everything. The power of our presence and to be present and to be there and to be more tangled, to be more concerned about blossoming and growing and shining and here because the fruits of the labor will be the follow through if we can attach to the feeling and want to grow those feelings within ourselves and to feel them. But first we have to heal that instinctual self and to really lose the dictionary's versions of the things or the condition, the preconceived conditions of who we should be, how we should be, and the way we should be within our world. And so the weather is no different. It's like, this just is what it is. And no matter what, it we we are in it, we're existing in it. And it's not really so much about our world right now. It's at my stage, my age, my game. It's about, it's not my world. I'm existing in a world that belongs to my grandchildren that are coming up. It's what's going to be their world. It's what's going to be best for their world. But in the meantime, my presence and how I become a part of that evolution and become a part of that growing self is to share the wisdom, to share that knowledge so that they, that those grounds are broken and that they can walk a clearer path and they can walk in that path. And so by you receiving this, you know, this energetic connections is that it gives you the opportunity to really see how far you've probably come to see how, you know, how we're influenced to, to really recognize, I think I'm still sitting on that step. I think I'm still listening at that door. I think I'm still creating this story. And so move then from thinking to feeling and let, ask your heart. How, you know, how has that served me to stay sitting here? What narrative, how many stories have I created by sitting right here, listening instead of moving on and moving forward, right? Instead of being there. And so this sense of finding that sense of self is I don't need to wear a mask. I know <laughs> I have evidence that, you know, I'm, I'm this, I'm that it's there, but my, or my face, my truth, my light, my heart. My everything is what is here to really, truly be the big attraction, to be the big why to the things that I need to do and to the things that will just come. So sometimes we just got to show up and sometimes we just got to be there and stop sitting at the doors, listening to the chatter, wondering why you're not invited to the masquerade party. Sometimes you have to realize maybe you're taking off the mask. Maybe you don't want to have to put a mask on. Maybe you don't want to have to wear a mask. Maybe you don't want to have to pretend. Maybe you don't want to have to work so hard. Maybe you don't want to have to fight so hard. And there's nothing wrong with hard work. It's not about doing the hard things. It's it's about because we have to deal to heal. It's not that. It's the strenuous. It is what kills us. It's what destroys us. And a part of that in that evolution moving into from the teenage into that crone, into your children being gone, is you could sit there and live in the in in the in the sadness that you no longer have the the life you once have, or you can sit down and look at your life and go, oh, what do I get to do now? What do I get to do now? I get to do this and I get to do that. And but you sit with the original version. You sit with the the woman, and the woman that is now here. And so man, woman however you identify, whatever yours is. And it's that sense of whatever is right here, right now. And it's it's like in my book, I taught chip is the potato chip, but it is the it is the master creation of taking an original potato and turn it into a chip. And why wasn't the original potato good enough? Why did the why why do we have to put on that mat? Why do we have to leave leave and lose our identity why do we have to leave and lose our innate and true parts for ourselves to become something that is that is for flavored up 
for anything or anyone else, right? And so that originality, what, what our children loves the most is the self that is original, not the mask we wear, not the constant reminder that we are the mother, but the fact that there is a connection, there is a bond, there is a link. Now, leave the mother role and just step it into any other role, the business, the entrepreneur, the, um, and there's just so many, the inner child, like all of those and taking off the mask, peeling it back and who's really looking back at you? Who's really looking back at you? What are you really seeing? And so the so the world view has this mirror reflection, but it's not only what's directly in front of us. In that mirror reflection, you can be looking to the past. You can be looking in the rear view mirror. You can be looking in the side mirrors. What's behind me? What's coming up to me? What's around me? What's ahead of me? Right? What's over here? What's over there? I mean, so but what's right in front of me? So you can't see what's ahead. The mirror doesn't show what's ahead. The mirror doesn't reveal that. The mirror gives us all of this. This is what the mirror gives us. And it gives us all that what was, and it gives us what's possible, what, what could, because it's happened before. But what if what's ahead is not what's happened before? What if it is not the way things were? What if a lot of the insecurity or the fear stories or the things you hold on to is the fear of something that has happened from the past that you fear happening again? And what if it doesn't happen again? What if you don't experience that again? What if you don't get taken advantage of? What if you don't get stepped on? What if you don't get, what if you don't? What if that doesn't happen again? And what if it's all, what if all that's moving forward is the possibility of, of knowing that the world will always be bumping us around. The world will always give us disappointment, sadness. But what if the world gives us some of our greatest experiences and our greatest joy and our greatest journeys? And so back to the mother narrative, I'm using that story. But if I've only held on to wearing the mask as a mother, I would not have been able to embody moving into the grandmother energy and becoming a part of the grandmother energy. And I would have been still trying to mother my grandchildren the same way I would have mothered my ch my daughter but because there is the evolution and because I am now I I am the woman and I'm Corey and I'm Corey no matter where I go is that there is when I step into my grandchildren is that I know that I am their grandmother but I don't have to put a mask on and I don't have to lose parts of myself and I see my grandchildren mirroring and imaging some of this self that I rejected for so long. And now I see it as such, this is their innate self and there's, and they're just who they are. And the problem is we didn't just get to be just who we were. And now it's our opportunity to simply just be and to just be who we are. And by just being who we are, and re wearing that face is that everything else that we're creating will grow with us. Everything that's for us will grow with us, whether it's our family, whether it's our business, whether it's our friendships, whether it's our relationships, no matter what it is, it will grow with us. It will grow with us. So for myself, there is Corey Thorne Cameron. There's the work that I do. Then there is a whole academy. And it is the more than existing Academy of Higher Consciousness. And it's not just me. It is myself. It is my dear friend, Lisa Richard. And so there's these faces, but the image that you that is there or or what is there, it cultivates and grows by the essence of us just walking as ourselves. And we bring people in through that door, but we're not identified by that image. And that's you're not identified by that role. You're not, that's not the house, the only place in the house that you exist. Imagine as if your roles are simply rooms and they're rooms that you get to step into and you get to be a part or they're masks that you put on, but they're not masks that hides your face. They're, they're, they, they're transparent. So there's a transparency to the mask instead of a mask that hides your truth. It's a mask that, that you wear that kind of keeps you to be focused and give you what you need to be, gives you superpowers to be that version of yourself 
in that period of time, and then you take it back off. But you can always see your true self and you can always be your true self. And so the world reveals all of its true self. It reveals the good, bad, and the ugly. And because we are seeing the truth, we're seeing the good, bad, and the ugly unfold everywhere. But we can also see how our anger, our resentment can really turn people into somebody they are not. And we can plaster a mask on them and a story on them, but yet we have never met them. And so how do you know? How do we know? And that's, so there's a lot of unpredictability. There's a lot of change. There's a lot of beautiful things. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are happening right now. And this is such a beautiful time to be able to step into it. And so it's really moving us to be able to jump back and forth between logic, creativity, being able to see the self, but not to stay sitting, listening to that voice, listening to that masquerade party that's back here of the dancing shadows that is just saying, come back. You know, stay right here, sit here, cry, pout, be upset, be sad. No, I don't need to sit there. I'm going to get up and move into. And mis remember, misery loves company, but as does joy, as does love, as does light. Light, there is room for us all. There is room for us all to be. There's room for us all to grow. There's room for us all to fall. There's room for us all to learn. And there's room for us to be and to not be so judgmental, but to be so realizing that we are all just growing. We're all learning and we're all a part of this bigger system of whatever is taking place, whatever is happening around us is happening because we are a part of that. And that it's time for us to be able to see with a worldview. And if you move the mirror out of the way, even the world's mirror, if you move the mir mirror, you break the fucking mirror. If you move the mirror around or break it, if you move the mirror or turn the mirror, so if you flip the mirror around, you can see, you can see what is happening. You can notice what is happening. You can see this and, but you can keep walking forward while the mirror is in front of you, because you may get a few inches of, of seeing what's beyond. You may get a few years, you may get a few right? It may be something that just becomes that sense of guide. But if we fully break the mirror and we have no mirrors, we have the opportunity to create. So if you could never see yourself, you wouldn't know that you were any different from anyone else. Because if all you seen was each other and all you were looking at was each other, you'd only know you're different from each other when there'd be enough get together. But if it's only two and it's only two that are there, you don't know that you're any different from that because there's no mirror to tell you a different story. And so there's a lot more similarities to us all than there is differences. That's another story for another time. I'm like, that just became a whole nother part of another, another message, which I'm going to leave out for now, I'm going to get out of this now and leave this behind uh, and leave this with you. As I said, you know, leave it behind. And that's exactly what I do. I don't come back to these. Once I'm done, once I'm out, they're out, they're done. And this is why they're not edited. Um, and this is why they're not so perfectly crafted and put together for you is because they're all in the experience in the moment when I'm sitting in channeling in this message, channeling in this energy, there is no pre prep <laughs> that I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's coming. And that's why I never go back and listen. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, where'd that come from? But it is what it is. And it's just a part of the organic, the imperfection of just being and accepting because it took me a long time to realize that I would become whatever environment I was in, or if I was working, that it was so easy for, you know, spirit to kind of take over and work through me and speak through me. And it really wasn't me. Um, yeah. And so those things happen all the time. Yesterday, we had an experience of where we were um, looking for sunglasses and my sister-in-law couldn't find her sunglasses and we're just running around the house. We're trying to find them. And all of a sudden I stopped searching for the glasses and I'm just like, just giving up. And I just went over and start folding laundry. And as soon as I folded the last piece, I just walked away. I walked out to the door. 
I walked out through my patio door. I walked right over to my little table where my sitting area is outside. And on the table was those glasses. And it was, and she said, I looked everywhere. I looked out there. I was out there. I looked there. And I said, we're, on, we're only looking so far as our face, right? We're not really always seen. And so when I walked back in, she said, how did you know where they were? And I said, I just heard they're by the red dog. They're by the red dog. I have a metal red dog that I just finished, finished spray painting outside. And it was sitting outside and the glasses were sitting right by the red dog. And so spirit was able to move me. I could have doubted that. I could have not listened to that. I could have just kept going, getting back into the flow of working around. But spirit embodies me. Spirit moves me. And so knowing which spirit, knowing that it is to be moved by light or to be moved by the shadow that you don't realize the influence and the effect that your shadow has on you because it's been the voice that's been living with us forever. And it's the place it's, it's, we as humans can create the biggest enemy in the world. And it's often the enemy that we create within ourselves because we believe that what we are, we have to keep making better, that it's not enough as it is. And, and that we, we, we start listening to all of this outer thoughts, outer world chatter that became our thoughts that programmed us into thinking. And we forgot that we can think for ourselves. Everything in behind more than existing is I help people return to the self to be able to use this sense of discernment to think for themselves. And I mean, for your soul self, for your truest and the highest version of this self. And to be able to get to that point brings us to being able to clear out and to recognize how moved we are by fear, by doubt, by chatter, by the masquerade party, by the roles, by the, by the, the, by the instructions that come with the roles that we play instead of asking ourselves, is that really best for me? Is that my truth? And moving beyond there. And this is like such a prime time of being in this energy. And so if I could call this energy anything right now, this is the way to more than existing. And yeah, that's what I have for you. So I send you much love. Uh, if you want to purchase any of my work, you can go to my website, go to Corythorn slash Cameron.com. Um, all my books are sold on Amazon. And then the cards are directly, these Everyday Goddess Oracle cards are on the website. And if you want to check out the link to the More Than Existing Academy, it is in the link below. And in that academy, myself and Lisa, we have some amazing programs and classes that are in there. There's a lot of pre-recorded stuff starting tomorrow. If you are the 40 plus woman who's going through those transitions, those changes and those, those changing of roles in your life or whatever it may be, I am starting a four week masterclass of the soul revival of the aging goddess and really embodying that and sitting into it. Um, and that class starts tomorrow evening, Wednesday, which tomorrow, I guess I should say the date which is the 5th. So on June the 5th, Wednesday, June the 5th at 6.30, I think it is Mountain Standard Time. It is all on the More Than Existing Academy. It is on the Corey Thorne slash Cameron website. It is on my Facebook page. All is there and you can take part. You can still purchase your, your, tick, your, your register. You can still register to be a part of it. It's, I think it's like $140 Canadian to be a part of that four week masterclass. And I do the same thing. I channel this stuff in, uh, and yeah. And so we will be doing four classes and just embody and picking up the pieces of this sense of our soul, the piece of us we've left behind the pieces of us that we forgot. So that you can build this, this strength and build this knowing and build this foundation of just an, a radical self-acceptance of this is where I am in my life. This is who I am. And there's nothing wrong with being here, even with my little arthritis, little bones, even with the imperfections, even with the wrinkles, even with the lines, even with all of those other things, even with the growth of the people in the family, and even with the lonely feeling sometimes, it's okay. And I am honoring this version of this journey. And I would love for others to join me in that as well. And of course, we have many other things. And um, go check it all out. Go check it out. I send you so much love. Thank you for being here. And we will talk to you soon.